What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Paladins Console League, our fourth and final set of the day. Another region. Now we have both NA regions qualified for HRX qualifiers, and the team here in NA Xbox, of course, is Hype Unit. But don't let me tell you about it. Gore Miser joins me on the desk for our fourth and final set of the day. Uh, and this is a region, Gore, where 9 0 is Hype Unit, and then every other team yeah. is negative wins and losses 4 5. 4-5 for Classified and E-Storm, and then 1-8 and eight, uh, for Eternity. And, and arguably the most dominant team in the console league has been Hype Unit. They haven't dropped yeah. a single map. They are one of those teams, and, and not only is it just this region, pretty much every console team is scared of Hype Unit. They have been solid for a while. Even some PC teams, I've heard, have, have worry about Hype Unit when it comes down to qualifiers as a team that has the most potential, I think, to cause upsets from the PCL. They are always top of the list, and they have always been able to perform. Did pretty well at MSI as well. It yeah. was, I think, four games, maybe three games, but they were all very lengthy, and that was with a sub. Now imagine them being able to come through full power. Right. All of a sudden, maybe they start taking some some of those big matchups. Is there a world where Hype Unit console plays against Hype Unit minor league? I guess there is, right? There is it's, somewhere Because it's the, it's the, I'd have to go look the, at the console bracket. league console wars to start off that qualifier week and then those two teams get seated against ppl teams right and then the other two minor league yes. teams get seated against ppl teams so if, if there are some upsets yeah maybe at least not initially uh this should be a fun one though one that hype unit will look to win convincingly as they have in the past map bands though await frog isle and timber mill both gone and then the second pair is bright marsh and ice mines Still even some of the more fringe picks open. Yes. Maps like Frozen Guard, kind of one that you could maybe go to as a, a pivotal map for East Storm maybe mm -hmm. later, depending on how the beginning goes. Or sh start there. I wasn't thinking Shattered Desert, but yeah. I was going to say Stone Keep, Bright Marsh, Jag Falls. Stone. Uh, I already said Stone Keep. I was about to say it again. That's that how normal twice. it is. <laughs> and uh, Shattered Desert instead going to be their, their first place. Very standard but not standard now like a lot of teams yeah. should expect it but it plays so different than a lot of these other maps very very big for flanks sure and we'll have to see what flanks maybe make it through the pick and ban phase here in our fourth and final set of the day hype unit have not really even come close to losing some mess some some have been there yeah uh, but they are the driving force behind this region everyone else being negative win loss wise you're out of uh, so time. I mean maybe I'll ask you this and you're not really in the minds of, of the players I mean this is all on them but what do you fight for at this point is this just just more practice just getting better closer to uh, high res expo if I were if I were them I'd look at it the way like Navi what? has started what? looking at things the way NIP look at things where it's like okay now's our chance to learn everything sure. like without consequence Paris. if we you know what maybe we won only using standard drafts Let's try some triple DPS. Let's figure it out. Like, let's yep. be good at that, too, so that when we go in, we can I play both of those styles. Maybe we want to learn how to play triple frontline a little sure. more. You play that a few times just to make sure Electric that when it, commands. you know, push comes to shove, you have your pockets deep with strategies right. at qualifiers. Instead of getting in there, they figure out maybe after two games, and then all of a sudden you lose three in a row or four in a row or however many, right. depending on where you end up. There's a lot of moments like that where it's, it's going to be kind of riding on a very thin line, and sure. you want to be able to kind of balance yourself out. Well, you storm. I mean, you bring up practice, trying out different things. Terminus, I guess technically still different, but it's no longer like the big, Whoa! oh, my God, they picked Terminus. We're starting to see him yeah. as a point tank a little bit more frequently. Koga would Koga be a pick like the, that, though. Whoa! Right. <laughs> that could come through for him. Not too Where surprising on today? console as right. much as it would be on PC. Very surprising on this map. His ability to climb up walls, I think, means pretty much nothing here. I can't think yeah. of a single wall where I'm like, got to climb that. <laughs> I think the only ones that are really high up have what? fire on them. No, so if you climbed yeah. up them, you just hurt yourself and die. Did we see that? What was that? I don't Somebody even got... know if you can climb up there. I think so. No, it was... I think we it was like an Eevee went into Ice Block up in the fire or something. like It was something that weird like play. that. 
Uh, Kresnik, I'm sure, remembers, so we'll have to ask him in a moment. Uh, Buck, though, for hyping it, that's starting to become a little bit more standard of a pick as well. Yeah, it's still, I want to say, maybe a little bit more off on this map, but this yeah. is definitely a place where he can work. And also, if you hit headshots with him again, this guy chunks. Well, Hype Unit have not dropped a map this split, and they're not going to look to start in this one. Game one, Shattered Desert. Uh, well, Krasnick, do you remember? I hate that he's right. <laughs> I, I, I hate that he's right, but yes, you I hear do. that, Dave? <sighs> <laughs> there was, it was actually me and you casting fun. Okay. And it was Envy versus Renegades. I remember! And Rugu got Void in the middle of using Assert Dominance and did it again and landed on the fire and died and lost a certain dominance. I remember that. And also, in, in a casual once, I exiled an Eevee as Atlas, and she landed on it and died through the exile. Well, hey, man. I mean, maybe It was pretty play. sick. I, I was so sad I wasn't streaming. I'm going to be oh. honest. I was actually really <laughs> sad. But here we are moving into this game hype unit. This is, I mean, they're qualified, but I think having another perfect split, per, have another perfect phase is, is actually still kind of a big deal for them. I'd expect them to still be pulling out at least a respectable amount of the stops. I was going to say all of them, yeah. but we probably won't oh, see all goodness. of them. <laughs> I mean, well, Buck finds the opening kill in this case. I mean, he's able to pick off that Koga already on the side. A little bit of damage coming out from the Koga, but it clearly wasn't enough. Exodia already in the back line. Exodia amid pain. Exodia jumps again to deal with Brockus, and we're already seeing that these two Exodia and Emit Pain in itself. Yeah, go ahead and do your little dance, Barrett. Makes sense. 67, 60% on the point for Hype Unit. And they're looking pretty good already. I mean, it's hard to argue if they need a good performance already. Yeah, I mean, this Buck is so good at being a counter flanker that I think it's a, it's a big deal into this Koga. Koga duels all right, but in the face of a Buck, running any running any talent basically is able to, to really trade with them well. Maybe not in Snare. Definitely falls off a little bit because you can cleanse it with the dash from the Koga, that uh, Shadow Step gets rid of a lot of that. But right now, a little bit of a slow down. Dishonor actually kind of split from his team. No, sorry, excuse me, the Atlas a little bit split from his team. I mean, it's not gonna decide to go for him. No, Bounce House knock up Dishonor here on the left side, but it can go either way, but they finally catch Counter alone on the right. Now, 5v4 in favor of Hype Unit. Yeah, they've already picked off the Atlas. Now, like you said, 5v4. Buck's looking for an opportunity here. He's probably going to look to jump on one of the backliners, but if you get rid of one of them, at this point, Buck's obviously going to switch targets to the Terminus. It's already can't siphon from all directions at this point. He's going to be looking for the Koga in this case. He's going to jump in. And of course, Koga's just going to dash right back out, but not before he catches a swift bullet from Barracks, uh, from Barracks Barrel, in this case, to the face. Yeah, and Overpower used just to pull an x pow deny that that Strix the ability to spam from spawn. Uh oh Trim's coming on the left side, Bounce House, it tried to CC the Fury to catch her out of the door. Bounce House really good at that direct knockup, but not able to help right here. Now Inflame being used, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. They're still down their Strix. Neither do I, especially when you're trying to go buck wild, but the through time and space doesn't find its target. He was trying to clean up Koga, mid pain, luckily was had the presence of mind enough to be able to snipe out that Koga, so they were able to get the kill. But the Exile's coming through all the defensive ultimates from E-Storm just to make sure they don't lose these first two points. And Strix staring down the barrel of his sniper, but he's just going to end up getting popped by Barrett and the rest of them. Shu lives in what world? Shu gets exiled and then sniper shot by Strix and then set back and just walks away. He's still alive, spreading heals to his team so they can keep that luminary damage boost. Koga uses the Cyclone Strike, but doesn't really find anything. Just gets himself. Finally, Shu goes down, but everybody leaves the point for East Storm. Oh, Hype Unit just push it in in front of all of them, and basically every ultimate's off the board. You, I mean, you hate to see it. I mean, you obviously see a situation, like especially here. This is opening kill on that buck, or at least that buck provided. I mean, you see anything here that sort of stood out to you where he was positioned? Just a little bit off to the side, so not close enough mm -hmm. where they can punish him, but not far enough away where his shotgun damage won't be Point. relevant able to use that. I'm assuming, can I actually see this buck build? We don't see a lot of bounce house uh, in competitive play very often. So leg day three, and then yes, DR on leap, very important. And stomping ground five is what really leads to this snowball potential of this of this build in general. Five, Being able to leap four, on someone, get a kill, and then three, two seconds later two, having another leap. One. That'll also stack the momentum a little bit. I believe it should have two instances on top of each other for a short bit. So the buck almost becomes harder to kill than bulk up. Yeah, I mean, we have three members on Hype Unit that are already just undying. <laughs> we see Exodia here already in the back line once again. He ends up getting sniped. Luckily, Powell was already looking out for him, but so was Barrick in this case. 
they were actually able to finish him off, and now they're able to direct their attention elsewhere. The Siphon is still up, but at the same time, they're eating a lot of damage on the East Storm. Yeah, counter goes down to a bit, to a bit pain, and Leon, strong backline, so good into Atlas. He doesn't really have a lot of answers. Look at this aggression while they're not even able to contest the point whatsoever. Potts wants to win this duel, but Koga just can't do it. Barry, oh, not Barry, Buck jumps in and at least lands directly behind Terminus. He has the revive, but of course he's not going to use it. It's going to take a little bit of time to actually make sure that he has it ready again in a timely manner with two minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. Hive Unit already have three points. They only need one more to actually be able to close this one out. But yeah, Terminus, he has to really consider his options and doesn't want to use that revive a little bit too early. Honestly, the Terminus dying that late is worst case. I mean, you could even go in and try to die just to make the anime do something, but Counter not looking. It's back to Leon. Leon burns him down and tanks for East Rome. Honestly, just getting bullied around. Yeah, I mean, three times in space, though, is going to be able to find Pow. That's going to be something great for a Hype Unit. The revive actually does come through, though. Terminus wants to be able to stand Terminus wants to actually be able to stay in this fight for as long as possible. The Siphon does go up. The Burst comes out. He's just trying to eat as much charge as possible. They get a kill on the buck, but we already see how comfortable Hype Unit is. They have to use the Inflame defensively, but you see how far up they are compared to Eastor. The, in the Buck Wild forced out most of the Siphon. Wonderful doesn't know Dishonor's chasing him. Now they have to disengage. But how forward are they going to get? How much can the pain burn the Atlas cooldowns here? I'm not sure what... Counter really has up for this. Hype Unit, smart, not really peek. Don't need to give up any of their health pool. Now they can peek it once. Counter gets so low. Has to use the stasis field and pot. A little bit on an island. Has to get siphoned out, but does barely make it away. But they might trade Dishonor for this. Yeah, I already see that. He tries to jump back in or at least keep himself from being thrown out a little bit too far. Doesn't want to be thrown all the way back into the back line of Hype Unit. They've got the Dome Shield. They've got Enlightenment. They've got Overpower. Three ultimates that can literally carry them to victory in this case. However, we already see Atlas on the side. He's looking for the Genos. Buff's already coming in. He jumps all the way in, but he gets set all the way back. He's got to stop doing this alone. Counter actually catches out in his pain, but still no one really to help him. At this point, they could just ignore him and move forward. And him being over here isn't really helping the main fight. Still two kills on the side of Hype Unit. Counter trying to win this fight, but no second chance. Needs oh Bucks just one shot away. Counter barely wins that. But look at this cart. Only a couple spawners left, and Wonderful catches the only healer on Eastor. That's good, yeah, I agree. They're able to actually take away their source of healing. Counter has to re just has to rewind himself, try and find his opening. But look at how low he already is. Wonderful actually already goes around. He tries to dash in. I don't know what happened with the exile. He may have missed, but with a double kill on Barrett, Hype Unit taking their first game. I was actually surprised he didn't just immediately counter that shield, uh, cancel that, that dash and take down the Atlas, but still the exile didn't connect. Was able to find that kill, and... I, I don't. I don't really like how we, how split E Storm were. Right. I would say I, I don't like the the solo flank from counter. I think it's too easy to punish. The, the as of course the one time I was really critiquing it is the only time it works out. <laughs> but still, sometimes sometimes you can do the wrong thing and it works. You know, sometimes you pull out something that's not really expected, punishes a team that might be ready for something else. I, I just don't like how alone he was. I felt like it made him kind of a free pick for Hype right. to go off of. Right. I agree with that too. I mean. At the same time, I mean, you take a look at the Buck, you take a look at the Koga, the two of them. They're really the outlandish picks here. Buck, though, on the other hand, I mean, he definitely held his own. We can see it here in the post game as well. See how exactly he was able to hold up. He only has 39,000 damage. That was a bad lead up. For no, no, I was laughing at, at the Koga picture again. Oh, wait, with the Koga. <laughs> I always, yeah, I always forget about that, how, how close he is to the camera. <laughs> is this all right? He asked the cameraman. And you want me to stand too here, Too scared right? to say no was them. And, Actually, look at the damage across the board for Hype Unit. I mean, pretty respectable across the mid pain and wonderful. Only about 1,400 behind. Yeah. I mean, Exodia, though. Of course, I mean, once again, I, I talked about the buck just a little bit. But, I mean, he has very, very low damage. But mid pain is the one as well that you can take a look at. But the slash lines all across the board for Hype Unit. And on the flip side, East Storm's, uh, uh, all of East Storm's slash lines as well looking pretty rough. I mean, Pot's really just countered out by that buck. Not not able to really get away with too much. The dash is not able to come out in time. This this point control, though, from Hype Unit, the crush from the Terminus really didn't bring too much, and Wonderful was a constant presence. Any wider map like this is really where Barrett comes into his own, able to keep that damage with low fall off up for a really long time. It, it, it's so much more than most of the other point tanks are going to be able to do. Okay, he totally juked it. Okay. And then his turret killed Dishonor on the other oh. side. So <laughs> both tanks basically killed in an instant by Wonderful. You can't beat that. Yeah, I mean, 
literally living up to his lane and living up to his name in this case, nine and one. I mean, he was looking really, really good, especially on the barrack. I mean, the aggression that hype unit had was just so much to deal with. I mean, you got a really aggressive comp too. You got the barrack, you got the con, Leon, Genos, Buck. It's like, it's like a field day for him. Yeah, and there's not really many ways for them to stop the aggression from mm -hmm. them. Terminus and Atlas, their shields, he wasn't running Temporal Divide, so the shields are kind of just like, like the small right. little, either the Siphon, which is yay big. Baby shield. The Stasis Field, which may maybe covers the distance between me and you. <laughs> Leon and Buck just ignore it. Yeah, I mean, the F, they definitely just ignore it. I mean, Hype Unit already with a Game 1 under their belt right after this break will be into Game 2. Alienware the official PC provider of the Paladins Console League. Well, this set starts off much the way you would expect as the disembodied voice of Dave now comes to fruition here. Joining back on the desk here, Dolson and Gormizer. And like I said, I think that's what you kind of expect this matchup to look like. Yeah, Hype Unit are really good. E-Storm are really good. Hype Unit's just really, really, really good. There's a reason yes. they've qualified already. There's a reason they haven't dropped a map. And there's a reason a lot of teams actually look at them as a much bigger threat than yeah. they've given kind of credence to in the past when it comes to any kind of crossplay, any kind of anything mm -hmm. involving console. These guys are a threat. And 4-0 there, more than likely, well, taking it to a 4 owable map, I should there say. That's a very diplomatic way of going about it's, it. Uh, <laughs> Definitely in their favor. Sure. And I, I think you could probably say that top to bottom every map in the game. Uh, they tend to do just fine everywhere they go. Jaguar Falls is map number two. And we've seen some variety in the picks and bans on this map. Actually, earlier today, and it was Jaguar Falls is one of them, but there was kind of an emphasis on Grok. Yeah. In, was that the Cyclone? Yeah, it was the Cyclone Froom Froom set. set. They were just trading Grok back and forth. I don't know if these two teams are going to opt for that. Victor banned out, notably. Vivian as well. And, and this, I'm still just, I don't know, maybe it's different because I it's console, but I feel like it's so yours. wild to me that Makoa is constantly being let through. Maybe it's not as consistent, very hook dependent. Can't get that quick hook flick as consistently, but he goes through a lot. Let through, but ignored a lot as well. That's, That's the one that kind of catches me is it's just like, you know, I'm throwing Makoa out there. He's available right now. I he might not get picked up at all. Up. Yeah. And if he does, I mean, it wouldn't be surprised if he was 8th, ninth, 10th for one of these teams, depending on where they want to go. This, in my mind, this map is a couple things, though. This is a place for Hype Unit these to try something team. else out. Yes. I mean, this is, like is where we see team, Na'Vi come and play me. Moji all the time, right? Figure something else out. Make it your map kind of deal. Right. And then all of a sudden you open it up. I want to see last. more dredge. I'm just going to come out and say it. I don't know where that's coming from, but in my deep in my mind, you. what I want is just more dredge. Whether it's on Jack Falls, Ice Mines, Serpent Beach, one of the three. I just want them out more. I mean, is that, I don't know, is the it worth it with the ultimate like change? I mean, because it, it, what, it damages quicker, but doesn't do nearly as, as much, much damage. Yeah. <laughs> so you get it out a lot faster, and it's more kind of guaranteed to hit, right. more or less. But it's not going to... Chunk like them a down shot, for right. 100 to 0. Yeah. It was, right. uh, originally, it was like 4K damage. Now it's sitting around, I think, 1,500, which is still a yeah, pretty good amount of burst. But it's like a, almost an insta shot. 
as it comes through. Still enough time that if you're fast enough on it, like the minute you hear it, you dash, you should probably be able to get out yeah. of it. But you have to go through the path of least resistance to get there as well. And really, really hope for no uh, Gore, you're smart. harpoon. You're smart, I'm over Gore. here talking about dredge. <laughs> he has nothing to do with this other than the fact no, that No, but I you really said change to. things up, maybe emoji. and Yeah. They do that in spades. They got a changed up lineup. And, and speaking if, of ignoring Makoa, they did it as well. Hey, well, and if you want to go back a set, or not a set, a map, where I said, hey, this is a good time to try out triple DPS and make sure you're good at it, Hype Unit are doing that too. There you go. Nailing that one in. Do you like the draft? Everything, everything notwithstanding, let's ignore the fact that we're happy they're trying something new. Is what they're trying good? Yes. I think Moji's good against the Grover Barrett Khan. I think Tyra's going to be good against the Barrett Khan. And I think Lex, along with the Fernando, is going to be kind of a death sentence to Drogo's, not only in terms of his ult, but also the hit scan. You know what else, score? Hype Unit. They're good. They're very good at yeah. Paladins. Let's see if they can make it work in game two on Jaguar Falls. Let's go, baby! Emoji time! That's what I like to see on Jaguar Falls. Early, well not early, in the afternoon currently, game two. Let's do it. Yeah, and if any team can make this draft work, I feel like it's got to be hype. I mean, they've definitely been more experimental than a lot of other teams. <laughs> Every time I think of them experimenting, I just think of Nick's breakdown of them all standing on point under an Imani dragon, <laughs> huddling up and praying that the night will pass, but <laughs> the cold winter continued to rain upon them. And now we're here, though, this triple DPS, a lot of damage amp in this comp. I was actually going to wonder if the Lex was going to pull out Discovery so just to kind of begins. even further amplify the damage, but... Still, that Tyra is going to be doing a lot, at least on her own damage. Doesn't give that boost to her teammates without hunting party, but still having that for herself is going to make her very lethal. And look at this early flank. No one's contesting a mid paint on the right side. Oh, okay, well, yeah, but they actually throw the fire out right there, but the Brockus going to be able to throw out that axe and make sure that he actually can pick off Tyra in this case. And, of course, both Emoji and Lex are already on the side, just controlling this, room, this little side room right here, also right next to Statue. Being pushed pretty heavily, though, East Storm, they're the ones with percentage on the point. Hype unit, despite the fact that they end up getting picked off first, they they don't have any percentage at all. Wonderful. Actually manages to get nice. out of that fight and distracting them. Pulls them in pain in to get onto Brockus. No real way for them to answer him right now. He'll disengage and without a healer, Hype unit can get very aggressive and stagger some kills here. Yeah, I mean, Exodia already on the side. Of course, he's watching where that bear is trying to go. He's going to run right after him slide in and make sure that he can actually slide right back out. Make sure he actually doesn't want to deal with any of them. Come on, Dishonor, why didn't you dodge that? Oh. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, Where's dude. the movement? He'll be used in pursuit. <laughs> now Pot's trying to apply some pressure. They gotta be able to break through Wonderful here in front. He actually had a two cloud left for him, so some extra healing there. No tank really close enough to go for a touch yet. Dishonor does find the hole in the middle, but Trensic in a great position to firebomb from behind, and that oh, basically goodness. is a barrack hard counter. Lex slides his way in to make sure he can actually apply that pressure on the bots. Of course, he has fire and down Adam, but Exodia just turns right back around, focus fires directly on the barrack, amid pain and Trensic, all three of them looking to have a party. Immediately, they turn on Drogos as well, a full-on team wipe, 1-0 to oh already with three ultimates up for Hypion. You, you always, you're always so excited when Moji's in the game, man. <laughs> Moji gets two kills. I'm like, I got to take my headset off. Fon's about to pop. Yeah! But here we are, man. Yeah! Zodia getting aggressive. The Leon Moji pressure. Excuse me, Lex Moji pressure. Very tough for them to deal with right now. Both flankers that are kind of like almost hybrids of other classes. I would consider Lex to be kind of a backline flank hybrid. Emoji's almost like a tank flank hybrid. Genos gets pulled in. Nice. This crossfire That's hard countered by the Whirlwind, but too much damage even during the Whirlwind. Brockus goes down. Yeah, he provided the healing. Probably shouldn't have provided as much body blocking as he possibly could in this case. Of course, Powell is going to be the one that actually comes out with a double kill. They're going to force, of course, Trinzic and Exodia back. The two of them have to make sure they give him at least a little bit more respect to presence, though, but not the best shots to be able to follow through. Of course, oh my goodness, that was actually really close. Powell actually almost ended up dying to Exodia in that case, but now he's back. He's looking, but Jorgos is there to help. They're making sure they do not allow him any room to come around that corner. The scariest peak of the day. The Lex was in two-shot range, and you were in one-shot range, but still manages to pull it out. Aggression down mid, though. No one really paying attention there. Storm gets forced back just a little bit. She was still there to spread out some healing, but Trensic on a deep flank. They're kind of just getting overwhelmed and surrounded here, East Stormont. Yeah, and meanwhile, I feel they're sitting pretty on the point. They're just talking about how their day went, so on and so forth, having a great time as this payload steadily pushing in. A minute still left, though. Two time in space to follow through. Finds a kill. They already find two more after that. 
And I mean, hands off the controller at this point, because I, I don't know what else it is that could have been done by East Storm to try and comp complete. That. I, I'm losing words great. at this point. Yeah, great pressure there in the end by Exodia and Trent, getting so deep into the enemy main. A lot of speed boost, a lot of speed potential coming in from them, and the snack nice. time catches out Dishonored. That's the point tank not able to contest the payload. 35 seconds, and yet here Hype Unit is still pushing in. I mean, they have the Immortal on their side thanks to the Fernando, but of course Moji is still on the lookout, on the prowl. She's going to be able to make sure she can take care of that Drogos. Now she's looking at the next ones. The Whirlwind has to come through to make sure they actually don't end up going down, but it's going to play a too big of a role that she has right now. Already with this flank and this pressure, 10 seconds left. The it's still being contested, but everyone's getting burned on high this side. Every defensive ultimate in the world, and still they're the ones losing this push. Hold on to Emmett Payne here now. Can he oh. trade with the Drogos? No, Pow was in a good enough position. No Genos is going to win that duel. East Storm. Zodia tried to flip it at the last second, but they do manage to success successfully defend <gasps> the last fight. And they had to spend everything to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, 7 and 2, 6 and 2, 5 and 3, 1 and 2, 1, 1, and 12. Hive unit are looking good. East Storm, on the other For hand, sure. eh, not as good. Pow's doing okay, four and two, but at the same time, the rest of the slash lines are pretty negative. But of course, it's still only one one. The fact they were able to defend successfully means that they clearly still have a chance. And the problem for Eastrom's draft here is that as the game goes on, their draft only gets worse. Mm -hmm. Purely because Grover does not handle Clauterize too well. And Barrick and Connor are Four, the two most shield centric. Three, two, I would even consider Nando one. to be less shield centric in some in some cases than Barrick and Connor. At least when Nando's shield goes down, heat transfer gives him another dash. Barrick and Connor get absolutely no benefit for their shields going down. They just get sad. If you consider <laughs> that a benefit, then that's something. But definitely not something for now. And very defensive play oh, by no. Hype Unit, and it baits out the overpower from Counter. Yeah, he actually ends up missing that just barely. Peeked out a little bit, tried to see if he can at least grab one of their pixels at least. Doesn't, well, just isn't really able to get it. And of course, Trizic all the way on the side. He's just one of these Drogos. He looked pretty low, but he definitely didn't have any fear right there. And mid pain in the same vein of that, he's pushing him for it as well. He does have two, so if he backs off, he will be completely okay. But I mean, man, oh man, there's like four people over there. But he's not scared. He's not even really running away. Sana tries to touch a little bit early and goes down and gives his team time to set up. Uh -oh. Snack time use, but just as a CC. You're not going to. There's no way Emmett Payne's going right, to chase that course. one down. Disengaging now. Dragon Punch comes in, but they have so much damage on the objective. Eastrom can take their time, maybe. They have the OT, but it looks like they might be rushing it a little bit. Emmett Payne's going to, of course, take his time as well. The three time in space actually does hit. Of course, you hear the little hit marker right there. He is actually able to get the hit, get the damage. Here comes Grover off the side, off camera. He's coming in. Of course, waving his hands. The cheerleader himself making sure that he keeps everyone's spirits high and their health pool as well. Two kills though right now for Hype Unit. If they can snowball this, this could be good. Only 57% on the board for East Storm. And Point Tank Dishonor not able to keep going. Khan trying to come in, but he misses the commander's grab. That's the hard counter to Fernando. And wonderful, not hold this shield for years. Exodia, a double kill already. Truly living up to the title that Yugi gave him, at least in this case. Exodia obliterate, making sure that he actually is able to take down those shields and make sure he's able to keep that pressure. All right, now, What's up? my Yu-Gi-Oh knowledge might be a little rusty. Okay. Did Yu-Gi, you said the title that Yu-Gi gave him? Well, is that, I should is say that... the phrase Yu-Gi okay, used. Okay, okay, I was, I thought you not were the title saying that, that you named okay. him Exodia. No, 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 like, no, 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 I don't no. think that's how that No, that that's happened. not true at all. I'm sure somebody's like in chat going to try when I watched that show, but I, I don't remember. <laughs> no, 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 no. Remember that much, at least overpower being used in me to pull Shu in again. Definitely, I think, a good target for them to pick, but a fight is winnable without a Genos. His healing is still on the board for a little while. Look at this flank right now from a mid pain into the back, plus the crossfire. Nice crossfire coming out. Everyone in the Hype Unit are already pushing up. The double kill already, the enlightenment. You see a flash. You see the light. You have to go towards it, of course. And now Pow is going to try and live. As long as he can, he's able to take a, uh, l at least take away two prime targets on Hype Unit's side. The slash lines are still looking good, and their pressure is still looking phenomenal. The crossfire and mortal combo is so deadly. I mean, imagine losing your support and then winning the next fight. Right. You you use your tank ultimate, and it's enough to just completely turn the fight around. And that's why Nando kind of seeing a resurgence a little bit since that buff. People are really saying that plus his ultimate, and this value is is really there. Sodia may be overstaying his welcome in main just a little bit to slow things down for hype unit, but. Honestly, I don't know. The pace that Hype Unit are setting, I honestly don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, I mean... Aggressive or not. Drogo's already on the side. Of course, he knows that they're over there. They're, they're in that little room right there. They're applying damage, of course. 
We're not just going to sit there idling. The Dragon Punch actually comes through. Emoji gives himself a magical barrier. He doesn't know where to go. He actually manages to get Trinzic, though, thankfully. They have the Whirlwind. They've got Dome Shield. They've got Enlightenment. They've got some pretty good also East Storm side. But they've got Execute and through. They got two Executes, actually, on Hype Unit side. So if they place this well enough, they could very well still end up ending this. Here we go. The through time and space. But a good jump. He's actually not going to let it hit. Pow actually jumped off of the little piece of environment next to him to stay alive. So great positioning by him. Very dangerously low now, though. But no one on that team on Hype Unit can really deal that indirect damage to him. The Firebomb as far back as it is. Trying to be slowed down by Pots. Great direct by him. But Hype Unit, I think they still want to do this, him. Pretty deep on the side, and happy to find a pick of their own. Yeah, of course, Fernando has the shield up to make sure he doesn't just eat endless damage coming out from this Drogos. At the same time, they are around on the bridge. These are just trying to find an opening. They're getting the damage they need to. Hype unit, of course, Exodia once again, obliterating completely. Ends up dropping the shield. Now they're switching targets. They're moving from just person to person at this point. With overtime already there, yeah, they have to use something if they really feel it to be able to do anything, but the Dome Shield just gets obliterated. Yeah, the law used by Exodia to take down the Dome Shield, that's something that we always talk about, but we really don't see happen a lot. Mostly because Lex, you know, fell off a little bit, but actually being able to see it happen, that really shows. Think about the impact that Dome Shield could have had. It could have been up for a while. It could have given them time to get their respawns, but instead Dishonored knocked to a 1 and 10 slash line in a, a really rough position for them to be. Now no dome shield when they're, they're staring down at the loss of the map potentially. Yeah, 10 and 8, 14 and 4, 12 and 3, 2, 4, 20, 4, 3, 21. Everyone's still looking pretty good. Uh, in this case, though, Kresge, you see anything that really stands out to you in terms of these items? Like, is there any? Everyone's pretty much going standard. No one's really deviating too much from the norm. I mean, life emoji. Something I mean, yeah. We don't other really than okay, well, other than that, yeah, Four, sure. Right. I would say pretty standard across two, the board. Uh, I do one. like the life rip coming out on the emoji. I think that pairs with if we could. I'm assuming the emoji build has the rejuvenate under low HP. We can just see it for a moment if, yeah, if I could. Yeah, just a loadout. That I'm sure they have rejuvenate 50% at low oh HP. God. That's what it normally is used. Actually, magic barrier. Wow, that actually blocked the overpower. Counters the overpower. No way for them to answer that. And if Exodia it gets away. This is a big net loss for Eastorm to start the fight. Zodia, yeah, he actually does make it he out, but of course it. we see, yeah, yeah, he does indeed have it. He's already over on the side, though. The pressure, Grover's literally stuck between him, Amit Payne, and the Fernando. Moji Fernando, both of them sand sandwiching both him and Barrick in there. They get both kills. At this point, though, it looks like they might just be able to clean it up. They need to keep capping, though, 48% right now. Good aggression here, though, wants a counter caught by the burn monster, not able to commander scrub out of the fire, so he has no opportunity to leave. This aggression from Hype Unit might just make it impossible to touch the objective. Commit pain intrinsic, the two of them are gonna keep pushing in along with the rest of Hype Unit. There is no way East Storm can make it back past this. Of course, snack time was already there, already present, but of course, we're gonna be able to do it. I love that, I just love the casting yeah. animation. Very good, very good aggression from Hype Unit. I, I love the flexibility of the Moji, the way they the way they played her, content blocking some of the choke points for Dragon Punch, kind of baiting that in. I like the use of snack time as, as a hard CC instead of as an execute. A lot that you don't get to see too much, I think, mostly because right. we don't get to see Moji too much, but still top damaging almost in the game, just on their team for now. Really solid play by Emmett Payne and on the map where that Moji always does best. Yeah, 86,000 and 87,000 respectively on both the Lex and the Moji. Of course, Pow did a good job of his own. I mean, 91,000 still, despite the slash lines. Yeah, we're just about to see it right there. Is that he still did really well, despite the rest of his team not being able to follow up as efficiently as they would have wanted to. Yeah, the tanks have a really tough time. I mean, look at this composition. That's so much, I think, pressure that the DPSs are putting onto the tanks specifically between Trensic, Exodia, a lot that, that's hard for them to answer. I mean, I think x -Pow did a decent job at counter pressuring, but between the law and the burn monster, that's really tough. And you can see here, I mean, the chunking damage that Exodia is constantly able to put out. Quick rotations on Jaguar Falls. A very specific to Jaguar Falls draft, draft I think, that Hype Unit pulled out, but Eastern clearly, at least the tanks, were not ready for it. Right, Shu. Of course, you saw him being able to get the kill on the con, but the Void Grip was already there. Of course, I mean, this is just the power that Exodia was that was able just really just to be able to exude throughout the course of this game. I mean, you get all five pieces, you automatically win the game. That's typically how it works. And Exodia truly not only living up to his name, but making sure that he's actually able to put out so much damage on his team. Just so we don't carry these Exodia jokes to another game, okay. what I'll say now is that Hype Units seem to be <laughs> all five pieces of Exodia. That's true. Exodia himself is just the head. 
Sure. The arms and legs are the rest of the team, and you can tell by oh, I like that. how quickly okay. they're just winning games. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty much, I mean, they're cleaning it up pretty efficiently. I mean, I'm really excited to see how they're going to be able to carry it over, see if they're able to close out this last game, but we won't be able to know that unless you guys stay tuned after this break. Paladin's Console League is brought to you by Evil Mojo Games, developers of Paladin. I could run through the fire, I could conquer the night. If I can make it, if I try to draw the red light. I could run through the fire, I could conquer the night. Well, welcome back to the Paladins Console League. Another game, another convincing win there for Hype Unit. They do lose a point this time, so that's, you know, something to hang your hat on. Uh, but that's about it. I, I think yeah. just too dominant, especially when you get a roster like Hype Unit has and then you kind of get the untamed aggression of a triple DPS comp. That just works for Hype Unit time and time again. Yeah, and, I mean, when it comes down to it, you had two aggressive flanks that we were playing, both that have showcased their talents on this map as well. Yeah. Not too surprising to see it come through and be as dominant as it was. Although it did leave the question, the discussion me and you were having prior, which is, <laughs> where is Androxus? I, yeah. Console was never as big on Andro, but I miss the boy. Yeah, I... Uh, and Dredge, and Imani. You know, I, I jokingly also didn't jokingly tell Gore, I was like, yeah, I, I forgot Androxus was in this game, just because yeah. you never get to see <laughs> him. I'm sad it? about that's here's me on on October seventh, moving into HRX qualifiers and the tournament itself. And Droxus is going to be picked at least once, We're and it's going to be like started. the big crazy pick that occurs at some point throughout the tournament. What's even better, right? Take maybe, it. Maybe, maybe it's maybe the not. first day, or not the first <laughs> maybe day. Not. Maybe it's the the Monday of qualifiers, right? Yeah. Let's say. Who's got a good Androxus? Knights. Let's say if yeah. they're in the qualifiers, they pick it up, and they just thrash people with it, right? Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, top pick of the game, baby. It'll come through. It's the Andro meta. I don't know. That's not going to happen. No. no I'm, not. Actually, I'm not even confident in saying that he gets picked up once. Maybe. I mean, we were kind of like – You're like, I'm saying it now. He's going to get picked once, and you're like, no, he's not. I'm, I'm retracting. I'm covering you. all my bases because now if he does get picked, you, you can just take a great sound bite, right? <laughs> if he doesn't. I'm just kidding. I don't really think he will be. Yeah. Uh, Leon and Strix being no covered now. Reporting. Talk about long-range damage confirmed for E-Storm. Not only Leon and Strix, but Atlas. Those fully charged shots as well. Uh, you'll be able to play pretty far back here, uh, depending on what hype unit pick. Uh, it could be full back versus full aggression. Ash does have a little bit of dive. That's going to be the... I mean, they just showcased they can play Moji and Lex. So there's two flanks yeah. on the line. I will also give Hype Unit credit. They are really good at EV and Mave as well, and this yeah. is a good time to maybe Stay pick up one of those, potentially for your last pick. Strix, we've seen him on Bazaar, uncontested. He's a monster. You got to get back to him. You got to deal with him and slice him down. But you can't really snipe battle him on this map. Red Knessa, like, and that's a, I, I feel bad because the meta's shifted to the way that you don't see a sniper battle anymore. It's not Knessa versus Strix anytime one's yeah. locked in. And you can't really do it just because the the stealth changes that makes it so you don't pop him out of stealth when you hit him right. makes it just more difficult to lock that you. down. And, uh, you know, also that, that quick burst. I mean, Knesset does have it's, it as well, but it, it's... Let's say 1,800 into a pistol flip with a flare. It's it's too much damage. Yeah, that's quick. Speaking of too much damage, Hype Unit are going to be going against it, but uh, they're pretty good at the game. I'll reiterate that one last time. And for maybe one last time for game three, we'll go down to your casters.
score with the master class calculations. The headshot, or at least the rifle, into the pistol, into the flare equals. That's uh, that's too much damage. Yeah, I I, I think I, I actually tried to input it into my calculator. Yeah. and I have to buy a new one. I rented this TI-87. Yeah, I tried to enter it into <sighs> mine. It just said stop. <laughs> <That point. laughs> I mean, this is a graphing calculator. It's supposed to be able to do right. that, but we'll see what Hyperunit can punch in here. I'm sure for their sakes, they're hoping that it is a 3-0 so they can keep their streak of potentially two undefeated phases in a row, and that's about what I expected I, in here for the talents. I, I think there was a small mm -hmm. thought in my mind about Binary Star, but Hyperunit, I think, like to stick to not super expected things because there are, like, triple tank double support, but Ferocity has always been pretty solid on this map. See Nip and their ability to use it. Yeah. I expect Hype Unit to be do much of the same with this girl. Well, Pods is already making his rounds across the map. He's getting shots on so many different bodies already. And of course, he's gonna be able to stay behind his team, but Alice is gonna actually be the first one to go down. I mean, just the pressure from Hype Unit, man, 63%. No one from East Storm has had the chance, nor have they had the lifespan to be able to touch anything on that point. Are they all just going to stand in front of that door and wait for it to open? <laughs> I kind of hope so, but still, you, there's so much healing on Hype Unit's side, plus three tanks that all have... Barrack and Ash are definitely the best solo sustaining tanks, I would say. Barrack, Healing Station, Bowling Ball, Failsafe, Ash. Lifesteal and Battering Ram, honestly, just do more than enough. Plus the knockback, Shield, allowing her to cleanse, cauterize. So much sustain on the board for Hype Unit. It's going to be tough for Eastorm to burn through. They do manage to find Trensic and a quick little flank onto Shu, but... She was smart enough, manages to get away, live to fight another day, even with Exodia trading out as well. Yeah, I mean, of course, the mid pain is going to be just up here in the high ground, chucking access at whoever it is that he can see. Of course, just to apply that pressure. And of course, he has the whirlwind available as well as the healing. So he's definitely still being a force to be reckoned with since you're dealing with two healers on the team, regardless of whether Grover's going damage or not. At the same time, Pot. Of course, just firing, not necessarily at an empty spot, but just trying to pre-fire around the corner. But of course, everyone from Hype Unit just comes up, surprises him, and now he's dead. We might actually see some caps on Bazaar with how quickly they're snowballing this through. Yin kind of caught out Whirlwind in her face. That is, I mean, it's not threatening, but it's still scary yeah. with the rest of the team walking at you. Everybody on Eastorm has to disengage inside, and oh, overpower, overpower might equalize things for Eastorm, but they have to get on this objective fast. I mean, a minute 15. The Atlas comes right off of the horse as soon as he gets dismounted, but at the same time, they are going to be able to find that kill. Pots with a good enough sniper shot is going to take care of that barrack. They're going to take care of Exodia on the Makoa. And of course, both Emit Pain and Shu are going to force themselves back. Did <laughs> the first DPS on the damage charts is fifth. <laughs> I just love that. I, I love I love this draft and the kind of gameplay we get to see because of it. Atlas, Grover, Makoa, Barrack all ahead of the Dishonored. Wow, doesn't dude. realize where Hyman Payne is, tries to run away from the axes, but he just can't find the angle. Yeah, I mean, he also couldn't, I, I, I just don't know where it was that he should have been, probably anywhere, but there actually. A good hook on the pods is gonna net them the kill for Hype Unit. Now, of course, they're just looking at the con, they're gonna kill him too, now they're just gonna move on. At this point, I mean, E-Storm, they really haven't had a chance to think, let alone breathe. They've been getting their kills. They had a very, I can't even really call it a zone for a very brief time, but look at that. Already 2-0 for Hype Unit and a 4 Ulta. They, they zoned, but they zoned like you would against a double DPS team, I feel. They, they didn't put themselves spread enough or with enough distance between them and the choke points to, to actually be able to deal with the triple tank double support that Hype Unit are running. As soon as Hype Unit broke through that choke, more or less uncontested, they just immediately got onto the Strix, who, who's really their, their biggest difference maker in this matchup. Or I would think that if he was not just getting pressured so hard by everybody on Hype Unit. We've talked about it very briefly, but of course, the Grover. Now, we don't see Ferocity Grover as much as the PPO. We mainly see him just being primarily dedicated to healing. But tell me a little bit about this Ferocity Grover and why this Strix is having so much trouble. Because Grover can be a little bit of a sniper in his own right. I, I, the Grover isn't really trading into the Strix too much. It's mostly just harassing everybody else on the team. Being able to combine solid damage with really consistent healing, I think it's overwhelming. They didn't oh, stop the Ash yep. on the way in, but no! she's gonna go over the edge. Perfect positioning, though. She oh, catches good. Pots. Catch him out. Now, that's no sniper pressure up for Eastorm. Yeah, Pow and Pots both go down. And now they're just looking at the Ying. Of course, Trinzik is all the way just behind them. Of course, Ying is probably gonna swap to her illusion back there, yeah. Make sure she can at least try to get out, live to tell the tale. But 72% man for Hype Unit. Whirlwind, you got the Ancient Rage, you got the Dome Shield, 
The only thing it is that you're trying to get now is a win, especially with how aggressive they're being. My goodness, he's trying to Spider-Man his way over that wall, but he can't even get over it. It was a good attempt for sure, and the door actually gets oh, open. No. They don't. Rockus accidentally opens no! the door and lets the, opens the floodgates for Exodia to walk through them. Oh, potentially a full team wipe because oh Rock accidentally goodness. strafed backwards for one second. Oh no. Now they're going to zone super forward. Luckily for their sake, the healers might be just out of range, oh, but man. Pods get staggered. This is a disaster for Storm. This is literally the worst situation that could have happened. And he misses the overpowered too. Never mind. This is the worst situation that could have happened. Oh no, East Storm. To try to fight back as much as they can, but Hype Unit is literally in their base. What else can you do? They're constantly getting hooked out too, and they found Pots trying to make it to flank on the cart. But Wonderful knows exactly where he is, calling it to shoot too. Probably gonna get one second before oh, he goes down. Man. That's it, almost another wipe for them. Atlas and Ying still in the spawn, but they're just getting completely zoned out by Trensic. There has been no kill for Blue since that door has opened. Look at that. They can't get out. They just dropped Dome Shut in their spawn. What? What are you? What fade in? Fade in real quick. What what are you supposed What are you supposed to do? Lose. That's basically the only option at that point. Hype unit with a super dominant performance. Kind of flexing on the draft too, but never going too far with it. I mean all their drafts made sense. Mm. Ferocity go over always good on bizarre. Tanks are pretty much always good. And when you get those kind of holden area self-sustaining right. tanks, what can you storm do? They just got walked out all game. Yeah, I mean, well, literally, they just left the door open, and they're like, yeah. oh, cool, sweet. You're not wrong. <laughs> Somebody left their house unprotected. Might as well just walk right in, and that's exactly what they did. Hype unit, man, they applied the pressure to literally the point to where they could not come out of their base. And we can see it in the slash lines here, of course. And I, I mean, there's no, like, oh, this damage is insane. But it's just the fact of what we just saw happen mm -hmm. is and what's it, shocking me. Honestly, I'm surprised that E-Storm's damage isn't higher. Right. Purely because they were playing into three tanks, double support, a lot of healing, a lot of damage. I'm pretty sure, oh, I think man. I think Amit Payne had highest damage and healing across the board. So good performance by him, but so tough for sure for E-Storm to be able to bust through it. I just don't think they're used to the playstyle you have to have against the comp that Hype Unit was bringing out. And it really showed, again, they were zoning just a little bit too forward against these three tanks. Yeah, I mean, you see it, how much the Ferocity Grover played into a lot of this too. Not something that you typically expect, but I feel like at everybody, at least at this point, most people know that Grover can definitely output some damage. We yeah. see it literally right here. And this is why you take Ferocity. Having that ability to just hold down those sites, and I believe what we saw in the cards in the, in the, in the post game as well, he was still taking that healing cooldown, that increased healing, that healing range. So he was still doing his job as support. He had more assists than Genos did, but only by two. Yeah, and that's because it counts to his own sustain. I mean, right. running a healing build is basically just saying, well, I just want to heal myself right. more. If my team's there, good for them. They'll come to me if they need healing. I'll be blossoming every three seconds right. for myself as it is. I mean, Ferocity Grover, before Strix was in the game, was the other sniper. I mean, you right. would play on Frog Isle. It was Knessa versus Ferocity Grover a lot of the time. So seeing him come back on a map where he can really help these tanks along and really kind of help his team live for these longer fights, it's great to see Ferocity Grover back. Don't know how much more we're going to see it, but still... Nice to have a little visit every now and then from the tree man himself. Of course. I mean, triple front line, triple win for Hype Unit. Undefeated once again. Already 3-0. They've taken the set. We're going to throw it back to the desk to close this out. Thank you very much, Font and Kresnik. And said it best, 3-0 for Hype Unit. The day is done. Of course, they're already qualified, so nothing really changes on that front. But we reaffirm that they're very good. Yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> what it is. It's actually really nice to watch them, and I kind of hope we get to kind of keep getting that peak in, just because it's good, well, one, for any team that's going to play against them to have the footage on them, but yeah. also just to see how well they are still holding up as they go towards qualifiers. And, I mean, as of right now, they're, they were the first team to qualify. Now they are one of two that's going to be going. Both from North America. So you look back at the schedule from today, Aaron Monner 3-0 win, Flashpoint 3-1 win. They're going to swap next week, so Flashpoint... We'll grab Ariel Arise. Aramana will grab Stush. And in a region with one win separating the two, and then the last game of the split is going to be Flashpoint and Aaron Monner. Uh, and then, you know, important stuff happening in the other European region as yeah. well. Uh, with Cyclone going against Bust Down, Vroom Vroom against Absolute Rain, and then they'll swap for the final week. Also, one match separating the two of them. Uh, so while North America is, you know, tied up nicely with a bow, Europe, 
still somewhat up in the air. Again, feels very much just different from every – I mean, every other console yes. split we've ever had has never gone this way. I mean, every way or every time it's been sliced up, you always knew – Flashpoint's going to win it. Flashpoint's going to land. You always knew Cyclone's going to win it. Cyclone's going to land. Right. North America, it would be like, I don't know, dude. There's two teams, three teams maybe in this region that have that potential to come through. But right now, there's two 10-0 teams in an A, and so they are the first ones to qualify. It was Hype yep. Unit last week, this week with their win, Onslaught. Knock that one through. That's right. Two weeks left in the console league. Three-win gap for Onslaught. Five win gap for Hype Unit. Classified were able to grab themselves a win over Eternity to move back to even. This is the region you need to keep your eyes on, though. Take note of map differential and take note of win-losses because the, the series of tiebreakers is win-loss. If your wins are tied with the second-place team, then you go to game plus minus. And if you're still tied, you go to head-to-head. -to -head. Uh, so between Cyclone and Vroom Froom, their head-to-head -head is tied. And they're not playing each other again throughout the rest of this split. Yeah. And, and their, their plus minus is separated by 12 at this point. So so barring, you know, big, big losses, big, you know, sweeps against Cyclone, they're in a very good spot. Flashpoint, Aaron Miner, eight, separating them map plus minus. So lots of things can start to change around, especially in the last week between yeah. Aaron Miner and Flashpoint. Yeah, honestly, if you're right now Vroom Froom, you are – Really hoping to beat Bust Down, yes, and really hoping Bust Down beat Cyclone. You're hoping for this triangle to keep working in your favor, and that potentially starts to change things yep. up. But you got to do one of those fast, and the other one has to happen fast in order for the plus minus right. to kind of jerk its way around. If you're Aaron Bonner right now, you are really hoping Ariel Arise next week show up, or you're hoping in two weeks that you are the team to just yeah. stomp and snuff out Flashpoint. Yeah, it's, lots can change around. Two more weeks of console league. Still two regions, although close, not completely confirmed. So make sure to tune in next Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern time here. Mixer.com slash Paladins game. See how the last few console teams are able to qualify through. Tomorrow we got the minor league. Still some teams there trying to stamp their tickets here to Atlanta for a few weeks from now, but that's all we got for you today. My name is Dolson. His name is Gormizer. And on behalf of everyone here at Skillshot, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. INAP, powering the control room for the Paladins console league. So talk about the new stuff that we've got coming out for you all. Look, HRX is literally my favorite time of year. It truly isn't close. This is what I live for. It's that second place. I can't <laughs> wait to see what first place is. It is HRX.